Welcome back. On the bench here, I have an Apple IIe that I rescued from a local university recently, and it's on the bench because it has some problems. Um, take a look over here, and I'll show you what I mean. Right here, as you can see, it's got bad RAM. Now, uh, there's a link in the description on how to see what this uh, error message means, but basically this is the self-diagnostic error message you get when you hold down the open Apple button when you turn the computer, or the closed Apple button when you turn the computer on. And basically, it's obvious it has a RAM problem. It's telling us uh, with that, that one on there which chip it is, but the important part is this right here is that asterisk that tells us that it is auxiliary RAM. So, uh, first things first, let's uh, test it without the RAM card in it and see if we get something different. So let's start there. Pull the card out and test it with the card out. Let's see what happens. and you can see that the system passed the test. Now, let's uh, do something else before just assuming that this card is bad. Let me take a card that I know is good and put it in here and test that to make sure that there's not some other issue, say, with the socket or talking on the system bus to that card. So let's do that. So this is the card out of my, Apple, my first Apple IIe Platinum. So we're gonna put that in. Turn that on and see what happens. Okay, that passed the test too. So that really tells us definitively that the card that came in this machine is bad. So how do we fix that? Well, it's just RAM errors. So all we need to do is take all of these chips out, put new chips in, and it should be fixed. So let's get down to it. Okay, so this repair should be pretty straightforward. According to the diagnostics, one of the chips is bad. However, sometimes when I run it uh, multiple times, it'll show multiple chips are bad. So we're gonna go ahead and just replace all the chips. Since, you know, if one or multiple are bad randomly, that could indicate that this guy took some sort of uh, static shock. So we want to make sure that we just go ahead and replace all of them just in case. So I'm gonna sit down here at the bench and show you the process real quick. So here we got the card and what we're basically going to do is uh, when you replace all these, uh, effectively, since they're all bad, all you gotta do is just cut all of the leads to all of the chips and liberate all the chips and just leave the little pins floating in the holes. Then you can take your solder, soldering iron, no, right there. You can take your soldering iron and uh, solder wick, which is this stuff right there, and you can suck out all of those pins, get all the pins out. Once the pins are out, then you can put in sockets. Yeah, sockets, so if you need to replace the chips again later, you can and then you put the new chips in, then you test it and you see how it works. So I'll show you how to take one of these chips out and then we'll, we'll fast forward through me taking the rest of them out. So let's just start with this chip right here on the end, basically uh, pretty straightforward. Take your, your, your flush cuts and you snip it out. This can be a little tricky sometimes, but you just gotta get in there and snap them. Snap. And once that's snapped, you can fold the chip up, usually. You can fold the chip up and then get to the pins on the other side. The chip is being a little belligerent. Now that that's folded up, you can get to the, the pins on the other side with your snips. A little difficult to see here, but let's see if we can show that. All 
right, all those pins are out. Now you need to be very careful because you can see I wasn't being very careful and I kind of scraped this wire right here. But we know where it goes, so if that wire ends up being, uh, if I ended up screwing up that trace there, I can rerun that with a bodge wire. Um, but yeah, you got to be a little careful scraping and getting those out of there. But it, uh, in the general, it looks it looks okay. So now we need to heat and suck all these lines out. So we need a solder wick and a heaty tool. All right, and then we just get to it. All right, let's see here. Now, if the solder wick isn't behaving for you, there's another thing you can do is that you can uh, try to grab on a hold of the nub with this and then heat uh, with, your, with your pliers and then um, pull up on it or heat it and then pull up on it and it might pull out but you got to be careful because if there's a lot of extra solder in there you might pull a trace or a pad or something and then your whole device will be broken and then you know bad things so hold on can you guys see me is that better yes it is okay Let's see if we can get some of this solder out of them, them joints so we got some of that solder out of those joints so now Let's heat it from this side and see if we can just get them to fall out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to do another trick here. So we're going to take the board, because this is a little, little freaky. Take the board, I'm going to put it in my helping hands and hold the board. And then that way I can heat the board from uh, this side. Actually, it'll be this side. Heat the board from this side here and then pull on the part or the little bit from the other side and see if I can't pull that out. Let's try this one here first. As you can see, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, use the solder work on all of those. I just wanted to demonstrate how you can do that, uh, but it's not always necessary because, as you see, the pin came right out. So we repeat that multiple times. Now, after you pull all the pins out, you're definitely going to need to uh, use solder wick to get the uh, the remaining solder out of each of the holes so that you can actually uh, get your, your pins of your new device in there. Okay, fast forward to me having this all the pull, pins pulled out here.
Well, that was a fun little project. We were able to do a little diagnostics, a little cutting and soldering, and we were able to fix another old Apple II. If you're going to K-Fest this year, like I am, take a look at the garage giveaway, because this guy might be making an appearance there, and I may also have signed the card. Well, thanks for watching. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and do all the other youtube -y stuff so you can stay up to date on my latest adventures. If you really like this video, head on over to Patreon and drop a dollar in the cup. Link in the description. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, 8-bits are all you need.